Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. It's been such a long time since we've done a half episode, but we have the opportunity to talk with someone that they we really wanted to talk to, uh, and when we get that opportunity, we take it. Welcome to episode 282.5. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, going around the host real quick, just tell me what you're drinking. I've got this beautiful N.A. Hobby Amber. Uh, Nick, what do you got over there? I am drinking a Wax Wings um, Triple Projection Triple IPA. Robert, what about you? Uh, I will be drinking Nicole Fitzmaurice's Smoking Jacket Brown Ale from Easter Market Brewing Company, which I think hopefully will be making an appearance with our guest. Uh, Yes, we did hear that they're going to be at a certain upcoming festival. Wendy, what do you got? I too have an Eastern Market Brewing Company beer. It is the Umbrella Weather beer, which is an American wheat. And Danny, what about you? I am back with Eastern Market as well with my favorite standby, Elephant Juice. Awesome. So our guests who are joining us to talk about the upcoming Beers Without Beards uh, festival in Portland, Maine. Um, why don't we start with Grace? Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us uh, who you are, what you do. And uh, if you're drinking something, tell us what you're drinking. For sure. Thanks, Ken. So I think what I'm drinking is probably the most important. So I'll start with that. Um, I'm drinking Hanode. It's a rice lager from Shoujo Beer Co. Um, they're a gypsy brewery out of Miami. Um, it's owned by Mari Orozco and Haider, Haider Hakim. So uh, they'll be joining us at Beers Without Beards. Um, my name is Grace. I'm the managing editor for Hop Culture and Untapped and also the founder of Beers Without Beards, our Women in Craft Beer Festival that we've been hosting for five years now. And next to you on the video, which of course you can, if you're listening to the podcast, check us out live, youtube.com forward slash better on draft. Talia, uh, are you drinking anything? And uh, what is it that you do um, that we, uh, or what is it that you do? There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Uh, yeah, I'm Talia. I'm um I'm drinking Rhythm tonight, um, American Lager. Uh, I'm in Connecticut, so a fellow CT brewery um, owner and head brewer is Elisa Bowens Mercado. They couldn't make it this year to Beers Without Beers, but they've been a staple in the past, um, so I'm going to represent. <laughs> and uh, I'm the VP of Festivals and Live Events at Next Blast, which is the parent company of Hot Culture. So I am going to ask a couple of questions. Um, I I'm curious, Grace, I read that the Beers Without Beards Festival started as part of your graduate thesis capstone project. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and just how it came to be? Yeah, so I went to grad school for this really obscure degree called food studies. Um, so <laughs> not real. <laughs> um, not real. <laughs> theoretical, yeah, and, and like political perspective of how food affects all of our different systems. And um, it's kind of like if you're not really good at cooking, but you are really interested in food and, and really interested in academics, you can get this degree in food studies. Um, and I just made my time there all about beer because I've been working in the beer industry for a bit. Um, and I just love craft beer so much. And so at the end of the, you know, at, in order to graduate, you have to put together a capstone project. And so I was working at Hop Culture at the time and we've been going around the country and hosting these festivals. Um, and I had this idea, you know, these, these festivals were amazing. We were bringing in some really great craft breweries, but I had the idea to maybe we could create a festival that had some type of impact and some type of social change. Um, and I thought, well, I'm a, I'm a woman working in beer and I'd love to see more women brewers and more women owned breweries uh, in the spotlight. And so I approached uh, the founder of Hop Culture at the time, uh, Kenny Gould, and basically pitched him on this idea. And he was like, yeah, if, if you want to plan it, execute it, uh, we'll support you and help you run with it. Uh, and so we did. And so that that first event had um, like 11 different events, panels, workshops, beer dinners that all culminated in this big festival, this big tasting festival at the well. And that was the first year of, of Beers Without Beards. So it's been a wild and and wacky ride. And now finally, after two years of, of COVID and doing it online, we're, we're back to in-person again. So that's what I'm super excited for this year. 
That's awesome. I'm super excited because um, Danny and I are both actually attending the festival. Um, but it's been five years since you started the first festival. What have you learned running this event over the years and how will it be different this year than previous years? Yeah. COVID there's... withstanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, there's so much that I've learned over the years, mostly just being able to find other women and connect with them. Um, I started out in this industry selling beer uh, and I was never ostracized, but I was also never really, I had a hard time finding other people that looked like me um, out of my route. Whenever I went to a bar, you know, I always found someone that most likely had facial hair and it was a man had a beard. And so I was really just looking for that sense of community. Um, and I found it in New York and, and I found it through developing beers without beards and over the years, just to see all the women come together um, and really just be enjoying an event and having time to, you know, drink together in a safe space has been really, really important. And to see other brands that have joined us over the years and supporting our mission. We've worked with a lot of great partners over the years and, and we're continuing to this year as well um, from breweries like Allagash and Samuel Adams and New Belgium um, to companies like Yeti um, who will be joining us this year as well. And so I think just seeing the community kind of rally around our mission um, and support us. You know, that first year we just did it all on our own. Um, you know, there's a, a team of uh, about three of us that put on the whole event. And now we have Talia and her whole experienced events crew of, of five other women that are helping put this event on and really doing a lot of the, the back work and the leg work um, that we didn't have as much experience in at the time. And so uh, just seeing how people have embraced our mission and our message and, and helped it grow is what, um, I don't know. I, I take a lot of pride in that um, over these past few years. So, and I think it's not. Oh, sorry, Wendy. I just there's not a ton that I would say is changing. We were a little. We did have to be a little more cautious this year. It's our first event coming out of COVID, and we didn't know what it was going to look like when we started planning it. Um, so, I think in future year, this year you'll see it too. But in future years, we really want to grow the. Um, the industry part of this. So there's always the festival and that's very consumer facing and the attendees are there. Um, but this is like our way to give back to, to our own industry. So one of the programs I'm super excited about this year that you won't see like the day of the festival it happens when we're loading in and setting up kind of behind the scenes. Um, we've got, we've partnered with Safe Bars, um, who's a nonprofit out of DC. And they're gonna, they've provided our whole staff training on, um, a variety of different scenarios, but like anything from dealing with misconduct and being a bystander to that or harassment or discrimination um, and how to sort of handle and manage those situations. Um, so they've trained us and then they're going to train all the breweries and staff that are going to work the festival the next day. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm hoping that we can continue to build on that. This is our first year doing that. And I'm hoping that we can continue that kind of every year after this. That's so cool. Absolutely. And you mentioned that you have an all woman um, crew. So tell me, as somebody who has been a part of a lot of different event committees, um, tell me how that's different than if it was not. <laughs> um, that's a loaded question. No, I think what I love about our team is we're really chill. Um, we have like team huddles kind of every day. Um, it's super informal. All of us have our certain roles, but you wouldn't know it. Like our marketing manager is jumping in to, you know, provide event ops and in, in the terms of like, you know, signage and coordinating VIPs and caters and things like that and vice versa. Like Grace is a managing editor, but Grace will be there like getting hands, running kegs, you know, doing all the dirty work too. And I think that's what's best about our team. Um, everybody kind of jumps in and does everything. There's no ego to anything we're doing, which um, is probably fights against the stereotype of what one might think with five women trying to plan this event. Um, but it's really, it's not that. And we, we all get along really well and um, I'm just excited. Um, I love the crew and it's easy to, it's easy to do this stuff when you've got a crew like that. That's awesome. And I'm going to pass it off to Danny. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just marking at the concept of a whole, the whole team is women. I just, oh, <laughs> um, I, can I do it? 
<laughs> yeah, we need extra hands. You want to yeah. help? <laughs> of our brew crew. We could definitely use more hands, always. <laughs> now you know what I look like, so I'll be there. Um, so, uh, what, uh, what like brewery are you most excited to bring into um, the fast this year? Like, what's a, is there a new one that you're really like looking forward to having people experience? Yeah, actually, I'm really excited about Shoujo, to be honest. Um, I've written about them a lot in the magazine. Um, and I just think that uh, Marty and Marty Met, they um, are infusing their Lebanese and Nicaraguan cultures into their beers. Um, and they're doing it in a way that's like, they don't have a physical brick and mortar space, right? So they're, they're brewing and they're contract brewing at different breweries, but they're still finding a way to create these really creative beers. Um, they also <laughs> take inspiration. I don't know if you can see, um, it's kind of hard to tell on this can, but they have some amazing graphics and they're inspired by um, a Japanese characters called yokai. They're like these spiritual creatures. There's a lot of myths around them. Um, they, in particular, like this, the shoujo, uh, which is funny because the shoujo actually looks like this like hairy ape with a big beard, which looks very much like Hyder. Um, so it's funny. I guess in the context of beers without beers, but they're just a really, really rad couple. Um, and they're making really great beer and it's just great to like have them come out to the festival and, and really to, um, get the word out about them. So I'm super excited. I've, I've talked to them many times on the phone and through email, but I've never actually met them in person. So hopefully I'll have the chance to do that at beers without beards. Tell you what about you? Who are you excited about? This is hard. Probably Javas only because oh yeah <laughs> they joined us last year for the first time um, when it was virtual and so we we haven't met them in person either um, and they did a really cool leadership roundtable with us that I remember um, and they are I think it's is it three grades three. it's three um, Brazilian women of Japanese descent yeah. so like it's just all together it's like breaking just a ton of kind of barriers there all in one. Um, and they just brew really fantastic fuck beer. Like it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably most excited is, about that. Is in um, Brazil, Sao Paulo. Um, they do distribute here in the U.S. through a distributor. Um, but yeah, Talia nailed it. They're they're three women who are of Brazilian and, and Japanese descent, and just kind of seeing those different cultures at play. You know, come into their beers. Like they made a beer with wasabi. You know, they're just doing all these kind of like cool, crazy things. Um, and they're doing it really well. Cool. Yeah, that's a great choice. Um, I think that Rob has a question for you all as well. That I do. Um, and I guess just kind of start out with a comment is that, you know, I'm really thankful for festivals like this, um, as I feel that they definitely help broaden people's minds in seeing women that can and <clears throat> have done the uh, you know, brewing beer for fucking millennia. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, get into the misogyny that goes into that, but we will skip that. Um, you know, much like, you know, the, the, there's a, a barrel and flow festival in Pittsburgh, which is, you know, which highlights, uh, black people who brew, uh, showing that, you know, there are these spaces where, you know, it's well beyond deserving of diversity in an industry where we don't have a whole hell of a lot. Um, now I myself can't make it to Maine, um, and hell, I can't even make it to Pittsburgh, but what I want to know is, is from, from your perspective, what can we do as consumers of beer to get more festivals like this throughout the country on a regular basis so that we can get to a point where not women in beer, black people in beer can be some form of normalcy? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, Talia, can we hire like 10 more people and, and put on <laughs> the amount of festivals that we do in the year? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think it starts from the consumer perspective. I'm, I'm kind of going to take the question a little bit different direction, but I think just as a consumer in general, I think just being aware of what you drink is really important. Um, at the magazine, we, we put together a lot of content that really centers around, um, like for example, we did a piece on 77 women-owned breweries that you can go drink from you know, right now and support. 
Um, and we've done similar pieces that feature Latinx owned breweries, um, you know, South Asian owned breweries. So just being really conscious of, you know, not just what you're drinking, but who you're drinking from. Um, I used to do this experiment with people when I first kind of started putting together beers without beers, where I'd have them close their eyes and think about the last beer they drank. And I would ask them to tell me what it tasted like, you know, if it was an IPA, people would get a lot of, you know, I'd come back with a lot of like, oh, maybe there's grapefruit, citrus, you know, depending on what type of IPA it was. And I was like, well, what does it smell like? Uh, if it was an imperial stout, maybe there was, you know, it's like opening up a bag of coffee or unwrapping a chocolate bar, right? And then I'd ask them to think of the person that brewed that beer. Like, what does that person look like in your mind? Uh, and nine times out of 10, it would be, you know, a big burly guy with a beard, um, maybe wearing like a plaid button up shirt, you know, that kind of thing. And, and that's the exact stereotype that we're trying to break with beers without beards. And so just having that conscious thought when you go to a brewery, like, who am I supporting? What does this, this brewery stand for? Does it align with what I stand for? And actively searching out, you know, those type of businesses that do align with your own values and supporting them um, because craft breweries are small businesses and, and the best way to support them is to buy their beer and drink it, which is great for, for you as the consumer. Um, but I think just being aware, being aware of that is, is really important. Probably uh, anything to add? Or is, uh, Grace is just so great. <laughs> Grace, well, there's, there's no coming after that. Uh, but no, I will add, as I always do, just like from the business sense of that too, like even this year, there were so many women-owned breweries, for example, on this specific festival that we wanted to participate and they couldn't only because of for like lack of resources, lack of funding. It's ex- even though like, for example, we don't charge these breweries anything to come, but there's still costs associated, you know, there's travel, there's hotel, um, there's all those things. And so from a business standpoint too, like, yeah, spend those dollars with those breweries so that they can do these things and they can go participate in these festivals and they can get their brands out there. Um, and they can sort of cast that wider arch. Um, so that's, that I would, I would just add that, that piece. All right. So, uh, beers without beards is coming to Portland, Maine here in two weeks, I believe, uh, tickets are still available Two sessions. Um, if I, uh, want to go, how do I buy a ticket? You go to festival.hopculture.com, um, and you'll be able to scroll and see the 37 breweries that will be there and you'll be able to purchase tickets right there. Um, they start at $65 and then we've got a VIP ticket as well. Um, if you're feeling really bougie, um, and that, can you- <laughs> <a VIP> ticket. <laughs> that, um, that one's cool though, because Allagat, it's going to be a bunch of different Allagash beers that you won't be able to get on the general admission floor. And then we've hired, um, a local chef as well, who's going to do some parents, some food pairings and stuff with a different Allagash. So, um, together that chef and Allagash are going to kind of like walk you through what you're tasting. So it's a little bit of a different experience this year. All right. And last but not least, uh, I want to see you guys in 2023, but I want you to give me a prediction. Who are you going to bust your ass to make sure that they come to next year's festival as a brewer? All you, Grace. (laughs) Oh, oh, yes. So um, back home beer, um, they actually tell you, they might be coming this year uh, or I'm not sure, but if they're not, if they are amazing, they're not, um, definitely back home beer, um, owned by, uh, Zahra Tabatai. Um, I'm very sorry if I mispronounced your name, Zahra, we've talked about it many times, but she is of Iranian descent. Um, and she is incorporating her, her grandfather was a home brewer and, um, she actually found some of his old recipes and just started homebrewing during COVID uh, and then started bottling and, and selling her beer um, and, and distributing around New York uh, very, very recently. And so she has things like sumac and dried cherries going into a goza um, and just like incredible stories behind some of the beers. And so uh, I would love to see her and meet her in person and bring her to Beers Without Beards, whether it's this year or next year. She, did she speak last year? I feel no. like I know. Was it last year? Um, I remember hearing her discuss this last year. And no, she wasn't a part of it last year. I'm trying to think. Okay. It might have been mm-hmm. another festival, but yeah, it could have been. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. 
they will be there. So I'm really excited. We actually literally just got the paperwork through by the skin of our teeth. So they'll be there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, that's going to do it for better on draft. This is 232.5, I believe. Uh, no, not can't be 232. It needs to be 282.5. 282. Yeah, I'm off by <laughs> Listen, don't sell us short, Ken. I mean, that's my <laughs> job because I'm short. Uh, uh-huh. uh, that's going to do it. Uh, Beers Without Beards Festival, obviously, going in a couple weeks in Portland, Maine. You can find all of our podcasts over at uh, facebook.com forward slash better on draft. You can like us on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google podcast, Amazon podcast. I'm sure we probably have a Tinder account down there that promotes our podcast too, but go check us out. We appreciate it. Thank you so much ladies for joining us, uh, and promoting the festival. And we will be excited to, uh, hear all about it from Wendy and Danny who will be there. Uh, that's going to do it. No matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Peace.